drove me to Quebec City to board a ship that took me to the French port on the North Sea coast. And then I went to Paris where I had a cousin, visited with him, he introduced me to France, and then went by train to Italy and took another ship and arrived in September to 49. The German annexation of Austria. Why did it have special meaning for me? It occurred on the day of my bar mitzvah, March 14, 1938. Hitler and the German troops marched into Vienna. How could I not be sensitive to that? Soon after came World War II. I was only 14 when it happened. In the last year before World War II, I was so involved in all this material, I began to keep a scrapbook daily, newspaper clippings, which I kept for a year. I don't know where it is today. It must be around somewhere. But I remember that I was vividly glued to this. It was a very important part of my daily activity. And then as a student in high school, I was fascinated by the subject of history. There was no political science. There was no economics. I was not inclined, though I studied them, physics, chemistry, mathematics, but they didn't draw me. It was history and related the equivalent of the beginning of social disciplines. So the combination of that school focus and my contact through whatever media of communication were available to me, I was highly sensitive to this. I wasn't actively involved in the war at all, though I had very strong views and feelings. It's not that I was a patriot in the classical sense, but I think by that time I was almost indelibly impressed with, cognizant of, and aware of the implications of the outcome of World War II. It, you know, it looked in 1942 and 1943, it's very likely that Germany would win. It's true by then the United States became involved, and that was an enormous difference. So that was soothing somewhat. The first time we went to India, in the first trip in 1951, we had to go via Pakistan, Israel to Pakistan and then to India. And the only airline that went at that time to India was Philippine Airlines. And she traveled then, she was an Israeli, with an Israeli laissez-passer. So we got to the Karachi airport, we got off the plane, and the not too pleasant reception we got was, she was told bluntly, she was not permitted to go into the city. She had views and she would express them, but it was usually gently done. And certainly for events in my experience, it was always gently done. But by 1955, Leora was three. Diana was in process when we left Montreal. We went to London for six months. Part of my work, found an apartment there. Diana was born in London towards the end of our stay there. Then she traveled with a three-year-old and a six-week-old. And travel by plane from London to India was not quite as easy as it is today. So her devotion, never thinking of her own welfare, whatever was good for Mike was what I wanted to do. This was her attitude. So the relationship was very special. And I think most of all, there was a mutual respect. I mean, it was a profound love relationship, but it was accompanied by a sense of awareness of the other as being crucial to one's own life. 